Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of The Magic of Oz by L. Frank Baum. So this is about number 12 in the Oz series. I've actually lost track of what number it is. I've been reading these as a buddy read with Joel Swagman. We've been doing one every two weeks. I will link to Joel's video below, assuming I remember, which I think I probably will. Um, as always, I'm going to start by reading the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs and share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. I will say I've only just started this one, so I've only got a couple of tabs for you. So I'm going to be doing this. It's kind of a cross between a review and a reading vlog, um, so I'll update you tomorrow um, at which point I'll have probably finished it to be honest so the blurb equipped with a magical word that can transform them into whatever they want Kiki Aru and the ever vengeful Regedo set out to take over the land of Oz meanwhile Dorothy and her friends are on a mission to find the greatest ever gift for Ozma's birthday but when the Emerald City is threatened and the two parties meet whose magic will prevail Dane reads who's indeed so I like that mine has got a little message in the start of it as well. Um, so it says, December 2019, Whitebridge Primary School, White Beam Year 4. Dear Daniel, in brackets, Dan the Man. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. It has been a pleasure teaching you this year. Keep up the hard work and best of luck. Keep up your football practice. Miss Aaliyah. Well done, Miss Aaliyah, for teaching the kids to read. And you've got to assume, if she gave him this one, Presumably, he's read the rest of the series, I don't know. And so Bini Aru has, has discovered um, this secret word, um, and he's gonna, he says, he decided to not use it again since Ozma had forbidden him to do so. But he reflected that Ozma was a girl and sometime might change her mind and allow her subjects to practice magic. Yes, because she's a girl and girls famously are unable to make up their minds, I guess. So, um, Rugido the gnome, he finds a way to get round Ozma's book. Um, so, well, sorry, Glinda's book. Glinda the Good has a great book called the Book of Records in which is magically written everything that people do in the land of Oz just the instant they do it. Then, said Kiki, there is no use our attempting to conquer the country for Glinda would read in her book all that we do and as her magic is greater than mine, she would soon put a stop to our plans. I said people, didn't I? retorted the gnome. The book doesn't make a record of what birds do or beasts. It only tells the doings of people. So if you fly into the country as birds, Glinda won't know anything about it. I just thought that was clever, um, a decent way of getting around that, because normally Frank L. Baum would have just not addressed it at all, you know? The wizard stands smilingly. I hate um, adverbs. And this made me laugh because the king of the gnomes, Rugido, he gets turned into a goose. And eggs are like the only thing that they're afraid of, that the, the gnomes are afraid of. So he ends up like afraid of himself. So I'm just going to read this little paragraph. Now, the goose was the transformation of old Regedo, who was at one time king of the gnomes, and he was even more angry at Kiki Aru than were the others whose shapes had been changed. The gnome detested anything in the way of a bird, because birds lay eggs, and eggs are feared by all the gnomes more than anything else in the world. A goose is a foolish bird too, and Regedo was dreadfully ashamed of the shape he was forced to wear, and it would make him shudder to reflect that the goose might lay an egg. And we get a reference to how nothing can kill the Oz people. And, uh, this is just where it gets really dark. Uh, true, said Regedo, the Oz people cannot be killed, but they can be cut into small pieces, and while every piece will still be alive, we can scatter the pieces around so that they will be quite helpless. Look at fate worse than death. There are quite a few of those in these books. And Captain Bill, he says, I've noticed that if you've got to do a thing and can't help yourself, it gets to be a hardship mighty quick. So there's some great little bits of, you know, not quite philosophy, but little morals that kids can live by, you know. So he says, there's a lot of things folks don't appreciate. If something would most stop your breath, you'd think breathing easy was the finest thing in life. When a person's well, he don't realize how jolly it is, but when he gets sick, he remembers the time he was well and wishes that time would come back. Most folks forget to thank God for giving them two good legs till they lose one of them like I did. And then it's too late except to praise God for leaving one. A voice cries out warningly, look out, did my fruiting as well. We have a weird little punk, uh, we have a weird little formatting error here where one of the paragraphs is over indented for whatever reason. And the wizard says, I'll do my best of course and no one can do more than his best. Again, a good little lesson to teach to kids. All right, let me get this. So we check in with um, H -F, Professor H.M. Wogglebug TE. And uh, he's got these pills you can take so that you don't have to go to lessons, basically. So um, the students of the Royal Athletic College, of which he was the principal. This college is located in the Munchkin country, but not far from the Emerald City. To enable the students to devote their entire time to athletic exercises, such as boating, football, and the like, Professor Wogglebug had invented an assortment of tablets of learning. One of these tablets, eaten by a scholar after breakfast, would instantly enable him to understand arithmetic or algebra or any other branch of mathematics. Another tablet eaten after lunch gave a student a complete knowledge of geography. Another tablet made it possible for the eater to spell the most difficult words, and still another enabled him to write a beautiful hand. 
There were tablets for history, mechanics, home cooking and agriculture, and it mattered not whether a boy or a girl was stupid or bright, for the tablets taught them everything in the twinkling of an eye. And the idea there is that he gives them these tablets so they don't have to do lessons, so they can spend more time practicing sports, but I'm like, why doesn't he just make a tablet that makes them good at sport? And then here we have another little weird end indentation as well. Uh, so yeah. But yeah, The Magic of Oz by L. Frank Baum. I mean, it was okay. It's better than some of the mid books in the series were. Um, but still, it wasn't as good as the last one. It was interesting, I guess. It was quite good how you see the two sides of the story and how they come together. Um, you meet some new characters as well in a forest. And there's like the gimmick of it being Ozma's birthday as well, which she celebrates even though she's a fairy and immortal just because she's Ozma and she can. But yeah, I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5, it was okay. And uh, that's about all I got for you. So there you have it, that's what I made of The Magic of Oz by L. Frank Baum. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.